It is one minute before five o'clock and here are our Thursday morning headlines. We expect to hear more from police later this morning after a teenage girl drowned in Hillsborough last night. Police haven't identified the girl, but they say she was found underwater after swim team practice at Shoot Park Aquatic and Recreation Center. Portland City Council, meanwhile, is expected to vote today on the Portland Street Response Pilot Program. So if this is approved, the program would change how the city responds to emergency calls involving someone experiencing a mental health crisis. Instead of sending police, two people, a medical professional and a crisis worker, would respond with medical supplies, food and water. And a big ruling came down in a case involving the Oregon timber industry. A jury has sided in favor of 14 Oregon counties who sued the state for $1 billion. These 14 counties filed the lawsuit saying that the state deprived them of revenue for decades by limiting logging in state forests. Attorneys for Oregon on the other side argued that those counties wanted to allow clear cutting and did not care about endangered species. Those are some of your Thursday headlines. Now here's what's coming up on Sunrise. Oh yeah, we've got an inside Woodlawn Extra for you this morning. We're spending a year inside one of Portland's elementary schools telling stories, and they are not all serious. Some of them are sweet, like this next one about dads and donuts, two things that definitely go together. <laughs> we have that story for you in about 15 minutes. And then later this morning. Traditionally, a winemaker is the white male, you know, or older white male, but I decided to, you know what, I will be that trailblazer. I like it. A label that you will not see anywhere else except in North Plains, Oregon, specifically at Abbey Creek, Wine, Abbey Creek Winery. That's where you will find a blend of wine, hip hop and chill. I like all those things. Coming up this morning, we're going to share the story of the first known black winemaker in the state. All right, two cool stories this morning on the Sunrise Show. At some point this hour, I'm going to ask Rod about uh, our weather on Thanksgiving Day. Mm. But Rod, before we get to that, we'll warm yes. up your forecasting abilities <laughs> by talking about today's weather. If we get today correct, that will heighten the chances <laughs> of us getting next Thursday correct, by the way. I would agree. <laughs> Here we are, 37 degrees. One thing we do know today, it's going to be a beautiful blue sky from start to finish across all of Oregon and all of Washington. Doesn't matter where you find yourself. To the bus stop we go. Clear skies this time of the year typically mean chilly conditions. 35 will say on average here in town out the door 8 o'clock. We do have some areas freezing this morning. We have east winds blowing out there in spots as well. 50 at lunchtime about 53 which is great for this time of the year when the kids get out of school this afternoon in your seven day shortly. It sure is. Thank you Rod. Well today is the third and final day of the public impeachment hearings this week. We'll hear testimony from Fiona Hill, the former top White House expert on Russia. Also testifying, U.S. diplomat David Holmes. He says he overheard a call where the president asked whether Ukraine would conduct an investigation into the Bidens. That hearing gets underway in less than an hour. So take a look at this now. This is what the front pages of some of the biggest newspapers around the country look like this morning. Talking about headlines, all focusing on what European Union Ambassador Gordon Sondland said during his testimony yesterday. Sondland, as we've talked about before, is also the co-founder of a Portland-based chain of hotels. Christine Pitawanich is live in studio this morning. And Christine, you've been following this hearing very closely. Yeah, good morning, Brenda Drew. Pretty much all through the morning yesterday, I was live tweeting the whole thing on our KGW News account. And Sondland dropped what some would call a bombshell of a testimony. Right off the bat, Sondland pointed to Rudy Giuliani, the president's personal lawyer, as the president's mouthpiece directing policy in Ukraine. Sondland says Giuliani demanded Ukraine make a public statement announcing investigations into an energy company based in Ukraine with ties to Joe Biden's son and an investigation into the 2016 election. According to Sondland, Giuliani said President Trump would grant Ukraine's newly elected president an in-person meeting at the White House in exchange for a public announcement about those investigations. And Sondland says Giuliani's requests were a quid pro quo. Sondland also pointed the finger at President Trump, saying he was the one who directed top officials to work with Giuliani. We did not want to work with Mr. Giuliani. Simply put, we were playing the hand we were dealt. Sondland says when he asked the president outright, what do you want from Ukraine? This is the response President Trump gave, which the president reiterated to reporters. I say to the ambassador in response, I want nothing. I want nothing. 
I want no quid pro quo. Tell Zelensky, President Zelensky, to do the right thing. Sondland also pointed fingers at the president's inner circle, saying top officials, including Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. Drew, he says they all knew exactly what was going on. All right, this story continues today, of course, Christine. You can watch today's round of hearings live right here on KGW starting at 6 a.m., but... Our show will go on. The Sunrise Show will go on. So you can watch the 6 o'clock hour of Sunrise online. We'll stream it there. If you like watching us on TV, you can still do that. We're going to turn to channel 8.2 next hour. If you have Comcast, that's channel 308. On Charter, that's channel 183. And on Frontier, we're way up the dial, but we will be there on channel 461. Other news now, a Columbia City couple says they are just desperate for answers after their beloved cat was shot with a pellet gun. We met their pet Chester yesterday afternoon. Man, the poor guy is in bad shape. His owner, Tabitha Berry, says just before noon on Tuesday, she found Chester struggling to get up the front steps to their house. She thought he'd been hit by a car and she rushed him to the vet. Turns out he'd been shot with a pellet gun. Vets say the pellet is either large, lodged in his spine or close to it, which makes surgery risky. I'm hoping for the best, but we don't know. I'm not going to make him suffer. I'm not that kind of person. Um, right now, he's fine. He's on a lot of pain medicine. The Columbia City Police Department is investigating the case. In the meantime, a GoFundMe has been set up to help with mounting medical bills. You can find a link to it on our website. In Clark County, public health officials are investigating a new case of measles. They say it involves a child who is not vaccinated. The child's family had been traveling internationally and they returned to Clark County just last Thursday. So possible exposure sites include the airport. We're talking PDX. Also, Peace Health Southwest Medical Center and Randall Children's Hospital. The exposure times you can see are right there on the screen. Anyone who hasn't been vaccinated and may have been exposed should see their doctor, but you should also call ahead before showing up at the doctor's office to avoid exposing other people. Well, 10 of the top Democrats running for president gathered in Atlanta, Georgia last night. It was the fifth debate of the campaign season for a crowded field that's still growing. And this one was definitely different than the first four debates we've seen. It had a much faster pace and it covered a wide range of topics. NBC's Jay Gray has a recap. Hello and welcome. 10 candidates, two hours. The early discussion dominated well, first of all, we have a criminal living in the White House. By Wednesday's explosive testimony from Ambassador Gordon Sondland during impeachment proceedings. Sadly, we have a president who is not only a pathological liar, he is likely the most corrupt uh, president in the modern history of America. As the debate continues, the questions are rapid fire. That what was once called climate change is now a climate crisis. And diverse. You describe your campaign, including your plans for Medicare for All, as a political revolution. There are the debate staples, health care, education, and immigration, but the forum also branches out to include issues of inclusion and equality. While I do not have the experience of ever having been discriminated against because of the color of my skin, I do have the experience of sometimes feeling like a stranger in my own country. The front runners controlling much of the conversation while those at the end of the stage. When Donald Trump was elected, not even sworn in, buddied up to Steve Bannon. What Senator Harris is doing is unfortunately continuing to traffic in lies. Or looking to make an impact with less than 11 weeks now before the first in the nation Iowa caucus. And with the field growing, former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick getting in the race this week and former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg hinting at a run. Jay Gray, NBC News, Atlanta. Meanwhile, President Trump's campaign made a visit to Oregon. His campaign manager and daughter-in-law toured a lumber company east of Salem yesterday. She was at Freres Lumber in Lyons. She learned about the plywood panels they produce and how they could be a substitute for concrete in construction. But the main reason for the visit was to plant a seed with Republicans. If it looks like President Trump can win Oregon, the commander-in-chief may stop here himself. 
I think you would love to come to Oregon. I mean, this is uh, this is very indicative again of of what he he did in 2016. He really invigorated people across this country who truly felt like they had been forgotten and left behind. And so many people here today, I think, said that. The last time President Trump visited Oregon was May of 2016. He held a big rally in Eugene. In the last election, though, Hillary Clinton beat Donald Trump by almost 220,000 votes in Oregon. All right, one more national story before we get to Rod's local forecast. The House Judiciary Committee has approved a bill that would legalize marijuana at the federal level. The bill now heads to the full House for a vote, but even if it does pass there, it still faces a stiff challenge in the Republican-controlled Senate, where we already know Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is against it. The Today Show spoke one-on-one -on -one about this bill with House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler. Even if this is passed by the full House, will the Republican-controlled Senate even take this up? Well, I don't know. We will see. We'll have to negotiate with the Senate. And I think the, as, 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 as the pressure grows, as more and more states legalize it, it's up to something like 33 states, uh, at least with medicinal marijuana, the pressure is going to continue growing. Right now, medical marijuana is legal in 33 states, and it's legal for recreational use in 11 states, along with, or including, I should say, Oregon and Washington. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, Rod Hill. Yes, I've always loved that. <laughs> so yeah, I've never been a smoker, but I've always loved that phrase. For Stick whatever. that in your pipe, and, your smoke pipe and smoke it. Applies to a lot of things. Uh, it does indeed. All right.